Hey guys, it's Natalie Nedham here, and I'm here with Jean-Francois Tremblay from CanLab. Welcome, Jean-Francois. Nice to see you. Well, um, nice to see you again. Monday night, nice to see you again. So um, I'm, uh, I'm a holistic nutritionist and I'm a performance coach, and I became passionate about peptides earlier this year and have been deep diving ever since. And Jean-Francois is our intrepid uh, lab owner in um, beautiful Montreal and uh, producing some of the best quality peptides out on the market these days, I would say. Not biased for anything. Well, so, so would I. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And uh, so this is probably, I think this is like the fourth interview that we've done. Uh, in the last yeah, I think time. so, yeah. And so tonight what we're going to do, we're going to keep it short because it's a little bit late and both of us are, uh, are running on fumes. But we're going to talk a bit about some of the um, brain peptides. So there are peptides, for those of you who've been watching this, you know that a lot of the peptides that are the best known are the ones for repair and recovery. So the BPC-157, the TB-500. What's interesting about those is they're incredibly broad spectrum. And included in their benefits is definitely some benefits for the brain. Would you say, Jean-François, like both of those? Oh, yeah, to a different extent that may be a specialty peptide for the brain. Yeah. But uh, actually, I designed some anti-aging programs. I think I mentioned that before, where I, I, I have two layers of uh, peptides. One is for more general um, anti-aging purposes, and the second one more for the brain. Right. But usually when I come to, if I do uh, one block, I would, I would throw in BPC-157 in one of the blocks. And that would be my peptide for general body uh, health and brain. You know, I, I consider it to be as preventive for the brain. It's, yeah. it's good enough. Yeah. So, and it's interesting because BPC-57, some of the things that we see are it's neuroprotective. It seems to help some people with depression. And it even modulates the do dopamine and serotonin uh, mm -hmm. upper, uh, secretion. So it's it you know it's that it speaks to that whole pleiotropic nature of mm -hmm. these peptides. The other secret superpower of BPC one fifty seven that I think not a lot of people talk about is if you know by accident you happen to have a little bit too much to drink one night, the next morning it's interesting how you know. BPC-157 might help to kind of smooth the edges. Yeah, that yeah. I've been told. Probably, but now I don't know firsthand either. <laughs> no, no, I heard that. It does uh, that, yeah. And probably <laughs> because it's anti-inflammatory, right? So part of, of a is inflammation in the brain. And so yeah. um, it might be able to help that way. The interesting thing on the thymosin beta-4 is it seems to also have, and thymosin beta-4 is, it's easier to get, right? Because thymosin beta-4, it's a much bigger peptide. It's got mm. different sections to it and it seems that part of it helps with remyelination so mm -hmm. how interesting will that be as the body of knowledge grows to see can it help with certain conditions that people have where myelination of the nerve pretty, pretty much everything related to nerve uh, damage or uh, degeneration then yeah. it's going to help and uh, we're talking old on uh Uh, even MS and all that, you see improvements when you put them on TB4. Yeah. So, I mean, so so these are the two workhorses and, and the two peptides that people probably know the best. But now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, um, I think we'll talk about three or four of the really specific brain peptides that people talk about. And the first one we'll talk about is cerebral lysin, which is, um, it's an extra, it's, so it's actually an extract of pig brain, is that correct? And it contains in it certain peptides that, and I'm gonna let you explain it completely. Like, well, certain peptides, uh, all the peptides that you would find in the brain, basically, you know, they don't select which peptide, they don't take out any peptide, they just extract, they have the brain, they extract, uh, uh, the, the, the core of it and bang, you have a bunch of peptides and 
uh, I, I like that product for that reason. I, I believe in extracts because, uh, you know, we think we know it all, that we know all the brain peptides, but no, we don't. And so probably there is even a couple of peptides or peptides related or other compounds in that extract that we don't even know about right. in minute uh, quantities. It may have been studied separately and not shown right. a direct effect, but they may be needed to support the effect uh, of the known brain peptide. So it's a bit that same kind of reasoning I use. You know, if I tell people to uh, take vitamin C, yeah. I would tell them, well, it would be better if you take an orange and your vitamin C. So you'll get from the orange all the cofactors and yeah. that will support the work. You know, in nature, it comes all together. Yeah. Uh, you never get only vitamin C or only yeah. this or only that. So that, I, I like very much cerebralycin for that, being a mix of everything that could help the brain. And yes, you find a, a couple of very potent uh, brain neuroprotective brain repairing peptides. Right, because it's even like using glandulars, right? Your desiccant. desiccant well, it is, it is basically. Exactly yeah, it's, that. Okay, so, so the interesting properties of cerebralycin, it's the one, it's that brain peptide that's really associated with improving learning and memory, right? So out of, of all those brain, like they all seem, they all have neuroprotective effects. They all seem to help stimulate new cell growth and that kind of stuff but it seems to be yeah okay okay yes but okay just a parenthesis we, we have to be careful because one as i said before all neurotropic you know people are looking for the 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 limitless pill you know that's going to make them more intelligent and more of this and yes eh, we're not quite there i don't as i always say it's going to help you keep what you have yeah and and that that's a lot already <laughs> of course if you have an injury same principle it's going to help to keep what you had before the injury it's not going to build up something that suddenly you have an amazing memory no it, no, it's just gonna make thing your brain work in such a way that it's supposed to work it's not gonna add something that you didn't have before so it wouldn't necessarily so let's say somebody's trying to learn how to play an instrument or they're trying to learn a new language if they did a run of cerebral license and at a time when they were trying to increase, like, they were just trying yeah, to that, 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 that would help, of course. Okay. Uh, it's just going to make the brain work in a way that it should work in a perfect setting. Right. So if your happens. brain was working and everything, you know, no brain fog, no contaminants, no nothing, you know, that's how it should be optimal. Then all those nootropics, they bring you close to that uh, op optimal. Uh, that's why they found, you know, they, they tried uh, nootropics on uh, 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 people who had a high, uh, high Q and yeah. they saw no difference yeah. because somehow their brain is already working fine. Right. So it didn't make any difference as mm -hmm. if they used with people with a lower IQ, then you could suspect that the IQ was lower, not because they're stupid, but maybe because of bad, uh, bad diet, bad this, bad that, and you know, brain fog and all kinds of things happening in there that lowers the capacity of your brain. So all those peptides and all those therapy you do, it's to bring it back where it's supposed to be, not further at this point, Hopefully, in the near future, yes, they'll come up with something. Well, there is one, actually, that baking out. I don't know if I'll name it. But there is one compound that does raise the IQ. Uh, but basically, they all, and that's great, actually. You know, it's, it's a big plus not to lose or to bring you to your optimal capacity. 
but never be, don't be mistaken thinking that you're going to be more intelligent or more yeah. this or more that. It's not like uh, steroids with uh, muscles. Right. And, and I think to that end, it doesn't replace, and I think what's really important, what we can never repeat enough, is that mm. it's important for people to, when they're using any of these compounds, not to lose track of the basics of getting the sleep. Exactly. Having the right, eating the right diet for you, mm. whatever that may be, of mm. making sure, like exercise is one of the best ways to improve your brain health. Exactly. A lot of them, they have been, the, 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 the framework they were investigated beside diseases were uh, by the army. You know, they had their soldiers, they, you know, in training camps, they sleep like three hours a night and they could see, you know, trying to improve if they keep their concentration, then they try this and it does mitigate, yes, the effect of Right. those bad effects but it doesn't mean that those things that have a, a bad you know let's say bad sleep that won't have long term it's still gonna catch up you know but yeah if you're in a period you're a student you're in a heavy time of a lot of study yeah they're gonna help you know they're gonna mitigate the lack of sleep and this and that but uh, if you're a, a b plus student you know, it's not going to make you an A+. Plus, uh, well, but maybe it'll help you to, if it gives you better capacity to focus and concentrate, if you put Well, it, unless you are kind of, I, I won't say damaged, but affected, you know, by many things and everything else is in check. Yeah, that that could, uh, it will make a difference. It'll give you that little extra edge. Yeah. Okay. Be, but, you know, I wish they would do that. Everybody does. Um and it's, but we're not quite there, yeah. actually. So in terms of using something like cerebralycin, and I think that brings up an interesting point, is that would you say that it would be, if somebody was going to use it, you might cycle it for a little while and then... Me, when it's preventive, okay, if, if it's to prevent brain degeneration or... You know, in the overall anti-aging protocol, let's say anti-aging, but no, I'm I'm more into uh, or optimizing. Yeah, uh, anti-disease thing. Okay. You know, aging. If you're healthy, you'll live longer. So, look into getting healthy, and by any means you can, and you will live longer. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to do it all the time. You know, just a bit here, and there, there will be a cumulative effect. Uh, so, if you're if you're aiming at the brain, like that's your main thing in your uh, health program. Yeah, you know, it's not. I, I mentioned that before. If you have uh, a stroke, then yeah, I'm gonna tell use them all and high dosages and shots every hours and everything because. The damage is there, it's fresh, it can be repaired. Right. But preventive wise, it's, it's, it would become very expensive, doesn't need to. Just cycle them, do three to six weeks of one, then two or three, six weeks of the other one. Mm -hmm. And you will have that cumulative effect at the end of the year, you'll say, yeah, you know, my function or closer to normal improved in that sense <laughs> depending on where you started yeah uh so uh yeah so i i would approach it like that not use everything at the same time uh, it's like using a, a 10 pound uh, mass you know just to nail uh, a nail you know yeah. you don't okay. need that much awesome okay so that's cerebral license i mean there's a lot more we could talk about cerebral license but those are the, the kind of highlights the next mm -hmm. one that gets a lot of airplay that t people tend, you know, it's gotten very hot over the last little while. I've seen a lot of posts in the group is uh, another one called Dihexa. Oh it's yeah. This one. Yeah. It's a good one. Again, I wouldn't use it all the time for many reasons. Even some people, they raise that question about one way or pathway it could aggravate a cancer or maybe bring about but again and you know my my opinion on that it's like yeah. Yeah, well it's, sure. the CMET, it's specifically it's that cement pathway and i don't know 
Nobody's really sure how. But it's but again, it's not the only pathway it goes through. Okay. Okay. So you know, uh, even if you don't take anything, that pathway is working. So, and nobody, uh, it's not everybody who gets cancer, you know? So even if you bump it up a little, it doesn't mean automatically cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, you may be doing or other things that balances out. Uh, so that that's the thing. I don't like to look at, well, yeah, I like to, to look into research papers and all that, but uh, at one point, they focused too much on one thing and blew that disproportionately. Like, oh, you don't take it, you know, that pathway is going to give you cancer. Mm -hmm. Well, most of the time, no. I, I mentioned that with the GW501516, you know, even when studies showed right, all the rats they had cancer and all that. But the truth is that so far, so good. Nobody got cancer out of it. And there have been people taking a lot of it uh, for probably two decades now, 20 years, and nobody came out saying I got cancer because of that. So, you know, you have to be careful about, yeah, you have to know. Yeah that uh, it's one possibility, mm -hmm. but to me, it's very slim. Uh, personally, that wouldn't stop me from using it. You know, it's Well, and you wouldn't use it, again, it's like everything, it's like we were just saying about cerebral license. and this isn't something you're gonna use day in, day out. You might do a six week cycle and then take a break. For a Three to six weeks cycle right. and, and you should be okay. Okay. So now the main, so the main headline on this one, again, we're not going to go in depth on any of these today, but the main headline on this one is it seems to have some benefits for cognition in general, right? Yeah, because if you look at the title of one of the first studies, and that's what got my attention, and they were talking about a new uh, compound that increases uh, nerve uh, connections between yeah. themselves. Yeah. And technically, that's how you define, or we believe that intelligence is mem memory is is built. You know, it's not only it's the the the, the, the connections the yeah. connections that are built. So if you take something that helps to build that intelligence, well, nobody came out more intelligent so far from taking Diexa, but memory improvement, yes that uh, anecdotally and in research, it does show that it can increase uh, memory. Well, well, I think the big, the big figure that really gets people's attention on dihexa is that it's, the, it's, it's been shown to be seven orders of magnitude more potent than BDNF at creating- There you go. So- <laughs> Like it is, like we're not talking seven times, we're talking like a one with like seven zeros after it. Yeah, that's, that's quite a lot. So basically what it means is uh, there is so much you can do, but it's going to happen a lot faster. <laughs> okay. And so, I mean, so I think in that sense, it's being studied in all the, for, can it be helpful for all the neurodegenerative diseases? Like there's. In oh yeah. Even on the, uh, they, they see it, you know, uh, if you go on the Michael G. Fox uh, yeah. web page, they yeah. bring it up, they see it as, whoa, this one is amazingly promising for a Parkinson's disease and all that. And you can imagine uh, for spinal cord repair in, in spinal cord injuries or any, yeah. any, literally anything that affects mm -hmm. that nervous system, right? So, okay, so that's Dihexa and it's, um, it's pretty cool. It probably deserves all that attention. Yeah, they, okay. The only problem with Dihexa, because we got a lot of emails lately, because it has been talked a lot if we're going to sell it or not. Or, well, one, it's not a peptide, but it's almost, and actually we can make it. We have like 20 grams in the make right now. I, I mentioned that too in the previous podcast. It's, and uh, last week, my biochemist, you know, is by making it, said, oh, yeah, I think I found a way to make it cheaper. We'll see. But the point is, it's kind of expensive. And the problem I have so far is that it doesn't, doesn't dissolve in anything that is not toxic. Oh, that's a problem. 
So it doesn't dissolve in oral. It doesn't or uh, alcohol or uh, uh, water. So how? And the only thing that is not toxic, it does dissolve in, is the MSO, like okay. uh, yeah. thirty milligrams per ml. Oh, so that's why it's transdermal. It's transdermal application, right? Yeah, but the problem with uh, dermal DMSO is the actual DMSO. A lot of people, they get rash out of it, 20-25% uh, of people. I don't. <laughs> so that, to me, that would be the best route to make it cost efficient because yeah. uh, if you take it orally, you have a 10-15% absorption. A normal cream, 10-20% too. There isn't that much. I suspect sublingual because it's hydrophobic. Yeah. Then yeah, it would be probably a better absorption uh, sublingual. But then it would need to be made in. Uh, you still need to dissolve it in something, don't you? Well, or make those little pills that dissolve uh, easily. Like the homeopathic pills, like those itty bitty. Yeah, pills. or you know, like those medication they're very small not too hard so you put it under the tongue and they exactly. melt away yeah. but that's a good way to have precise dosing basically right because you know to weigh 10 milligrams at a time and put it under your tongue there, there are people doing it you know they buy one gram and then they, they make like a and thousand micro, and micrograms right it's not even milligrams uh, no no it is milligrams oh, it is okay so yeah, normally, and, and when people actually, I, I kind of believe it's it's more absorbed sublingually because a lot of people when they do it sublingual, they, they don't need to do it every day. They do it, <laughs> it has a long half life. So they, they say, no, I take 10 milligrams every second day and I feel it working big time. Really? So that means, oh, but yeah, it's it's working. So that, that would that would be an approach. Or with the MSO and you apply it on the skin. Well, that would seem, I mean, it would seem to me that transdermal wouldn't come close to the sublingual from an absorption perspective. Well, if it's in the, no, unless it's in the MSO. Yeah, okay. And, and you know, it's funny because I've read on some groups that they say, oh, but don't use the MSO, it's toxic or what do you mean it's toxic? <laughs> you know, there are people who take it, who take the MSO IVs, uh, and that's one of the best things you can do for arthritis. Eh? You do it two, three times a week, five, 10 ml IVs in the litter. It's uh, because the MSO is a very, very potent anti inflammatory. Interesting. Oh, yeah, big time. Okay. So it's kind of forgotten. But the MSO is actually the first ever compound I bought. I was like 17 and I started to experiment with things, my first biohacking. And uh, it has been used for so long and like a lot of stuff, it has been forgotten. But it did work back then, it still worked today. Yeah, no, it's not. And, and it's not toxic, uh, it's not. It's not, okay, awesome. Okay, so our next, our ne next, our next contestant <laughs> In our mm -hmm. nootropic um, peptide uh, carousel here is Solank. Uh, so Solank is really interesting because it seems to be effective against stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. It seems to act on the GABA receptors in the brain. It also seems to have a boosting effect on BDNF, although nowhere near to the degree that, yeah. that Dihexa does. It seems to be helpful with Doug and with Doug with drug and alcohol withdrawal symptoms mm -hmm. that it's used to mitigate that. Uh, one of the things I've read about c uh, lank is that there is a certain percentage of the population that can be slow responders. So they've got to tough it out for a couple of weeks before they actually feel. Uh, yeah, actually they are, uh, because with c lank and C-Max, you have kind of two layers of effect. Okay. You have that profound effect that is there for everybody which is increased blood flow to the brain, increased neuroprotection, basically everything you want, but uh, it's there. Yeah. Then you have that second layer that make that kind of push those peptides into the nootropics because some people, they get an immediate effect. Uh, they get that um, effect on uh, anxiety where it decreases anxiety because of the 
uh, GABA binding to the receptors. Yeah. Uh, so it helps them to sleep at night because, you know, they're, they're, it slows down their brain thinking about everything. But the thing is, it doesn't work for everybody. It works for about 50 to 60% of people to get that effect. And it's the same thing. If you take somebody who's anxious and you give him GABA or any uh, Fenibit or anything like that, yeah. It's not going to work for everybody, you know, because it's a multi thing problem. It's not only the GABA receptor. Sure. So that's just another compound that binds to the GABA and calms you down. If that was a problem, then you will get the effect. If that wasn't the problem, then you won't feel the effect. So that's why it works for about 50 some percent of people. And again, as you said, for those it works. It may start to work from the first dose, or it may be delayed uh, up to ten, up to ten days or so. Yeah. So again, if it doesn't work f for that the first day, don't think it's never gonna work. You know, try it at least for two weeks, yeah. and then you'll know if it works for you for that or not. Because some people, the first week, they won't feel nothing. Then the second wind is, oh, it's kind of kicking in. Okay, great. Yeah. So, but you know, you have those two layers. Same thing for uh, C-Max. You know, C-Max has, it's a bit more ex uh, excitatory. Not like coffee, but uh, not like jitter-like, but on the brain, concentration and everything. But it won't work for everybody. About the same percentage. And for some people, it's not gonna kick in the first day. Others, it will. Uh, so anecdotally, it seems that if you take it intranasal, and those two peptides are very small, the, the, the uh, high percentage, yeah. 70, 80 percent crosses, yeah. uh, some people get a stronger effect. But then you have people, you know, you can go on groups and forums and they say, no, I did the intranasal and I didn't feel anything. Again, because it didn't attend what was the actual cause of Their what they were problem. trying to attend. So, yeah. So, and I think we'll just we have to keep coming back to this. Like every one of these peptides acts on whatever pathway, and it's going to work for you. It's going to help you if that's the pathway in your case. Exactly. It's tending to, and it's also not going to replace all the other things that we know that we need to be doing right. Like you just That's the thing, because you know, when you exercise, when your diet is on check, when your sleep yeah. um, hygiene is correct, even light, when everything, it works through so many pathways. When you do peptides, you always have to remember their tools. The same way uh, medications, drugs are the tools of a doctor, mm -hmm. peptides now they're becoming another tool for doctors and they're shifting to them, but they're still tools. They won't fix everything. You know, you still have to work on the base, take care of this, take care of that. And then you add those if you find out or you try, like C-Line, C-Max, that when it comes to the brain, it's hard to tell people, take this, it's gonna fix you. But no, you have to tell them. And, when, and more so when you start, do only one and see how it works. Absolutely. And then do a second one and see how it works because what works great for one person may not work great for another. Uh, that's why I'm not crazy about those formulation they sell, uh, you know, comp supplement companies where you have like four, five, six compounds in the same. And basically they were developed because uh, in the company they say, okay, those one they work, but yeah, they work for some people. Doesn't mean that combination is great for everybody. It may yeah. cover more people, but yeah. Although I would say that you know, there's a couple of stacks out there right now that seem to work really well for quite a lot of people. But yeah, I know, I know which one uh, yeah, you're referring to. They seem to be great, but the question is. Does it work great because it's the actual stack or because they put, I won't say so many, meaning that they put like 20 compounds, 
but they kind of cover the whole spectrum and maybe one or two work for you and two, uh, one or two other compounds work for the next person. So at the end, everybody's happy. But did you need to buy seven compounds? Right. Well, that's a good You point. know, I that, know that's the thing. That. I know that having spoken to the formulator of the one that we're mm. talking about that we won't name, yeah. their belief is that there's synergy between the compounds that they've stacked. That's, that's what they believe. And one of the things that I like about that one in particular is that you don't build up a tolerance to it over time. You actually tend to need yeah. it with time. And that, in my mind, that's generally a good sign with any compound that you're using that you won't need as much as time goes on. And like anything else, you're going to want to stop it for a while and then restart it. And, you know, it's, it's definitely, I mean, it, it, it doesn't, it's no different than anything else that we're going to use. Right. It's, um, that's the thing, you know, me, I've been in a few groups, not yours, but I've been kicked out. <laughs> And I saw people kicked out, let's say a group on compound X, you know, and everybody's raving about it and wah, wah, wah. And then suddenly you come up and you say, well, you know what? It doesn't work for me. And they say, oh, well, what's wrong with you? You're out of the group. Well, you know, that's, because that, that's, it's called confirmation bias. Yeah, absolutely. So you have to be careful about that. Uh, you, again, when you go in groups and forums, the tendency will be to have in those groups people that it did work for them. Yeah. No people problem. it didn't work, they won't even look yeah. to go in the group. They say, no, it doesn't work. What's the point? No, but I think that that's, that, I mean, that brings us to a point where that, that has to do with the, the people administering the group. Like Very the, much so. That's why, you know, like your group is great. But you have to be careful about that because... Okay, you know, there are people, there are more, uh, there are tests you can do for that. You can be more dopamine dominant or acetylcholine do dominant or GABA dominant or serotonin dominant. Uh, you can have mixes, you can be deficient in those four. And, and then, of course, if you're deficient in GABA and you take something that's going to boost GABA, whoa, you're going to, it's going to be amazing for you. But if you're deficient in dopamine, it's not going to do nothing. Doesn't mean you don't need something. So, and again, it's the brain. It's so complex. Yeah. Well, did you I, have to try. Did I ever tell you about the time that I had my brain mapped before and after taking one of those supplements? Oh, no. Yeah. No, I had one of those crazy caps on my yeah, head, yeah. all the wires. And so first we mapped my brain on nothing. Then we opened up the capsules and stirred them into water. It was disgusting. It's one of the most vile mixes I've ever drunk. So, but of course, all in the name of science, down the hatch. <laughs> and we waited 20 minutes and then we remapped my brain. And it, in my case, it actually smoothed out a whole bunch of edges. Nice. It, it created a beautiful, what's a Mandela <laughs> of the connections in my brain. Okay. Just, it kind of reorganized, it optimized certain connections in my brain. Mm. So, and it didn't do everything. Like I still needed a little bit of help on a couple of other areas, but it's so, and, and I, one thing I will say is the good companies will admit this will work well for some people and there it you go. will not work for other people. And the guys that are really know what they're doing and who are willing to stand behind mm. them will actually say to someone, if it didn't work for you, you let us know, we'll send you your money back. And anybody else that says, oh, well, there's something wrong with you, if it didn't yeah. work for you then, you know, you can just kind of punt them to the mm. curb. Okay. So we have one or two more that yes. we're going to cover. We can talk about CMAX if you want. I, I haven't heard, interestingly enough, anecdotally, I've heard less good, I've, I've heard fewer people rave about CMAX than I have about Selene. Yeah. What's your point of view on maybe because it's more excitatory, as you said, and people these days need more calming, but yeah, I think, I think they are too used to take coffee and they, they expect that kick uh, thing. No. Um, like what's the yeah, I, I, I still, uh, okay. Listen, me when I use it and I take kind of high dosages, uh, you know, I inject it. I may take, uh, 
half, half a milligram twice a day of each when I do. Yeah. So I should feel some, I don't feel anything, but I, I, I still take it because I know maybe the first level of things is not happening, but the second level, it is happening. Right. That's proven, that's a fact. But personally, I take C line, C max, I don't feel anything, you know, that brain fog thing. Maybe a little from the C max, but uh, nothing crazy, you know. So, but some people, yeah, again, you try it. If you, if, if that's, if it's for that, well, you try it. If it works, you're lucky, you know, then it's good for you. If not, then look into something else. There are a bunch of other compounds that are not peptides and that are great, you know. So I think it's at this point in, in our discussion, it's important to say that all of these peptides, although they're out there and there's lots of people that are um, experimenting with them, these are really, these are technically research compounds. So I want anybody who's listening to this, who's not in the group and hasn't heard mm -hmm. this disclaimer before to understand that we're not saying that you need to run out and find this stuff and use it on yourself. Mm. We're not giving any medical advice here. We're not telling you this is what you need to be doing. These are technically research research compounds and they are not, at this stage of the end, they're not fully approved and sanctioned for use within our medical system. So be mindful. And I think part of the reason why we're having this discussion is I do think that it's important for people to understand if they are going to cross that line and get their hands on these compounds and use them, they have to understand that there's no easy answers here. There's still mm. a lot of questions. There's things that are understood about this stuff, but there's still a whole lot of research that's going on and that has to happen before we really get a good handle on exactly, exactly. what the effects are on this stuff. And to that end, even the first two compounds we talked about tonight, the BPC-157 and the thymosin beta-4, I mean, these theoretically, like it's, this really speaks to that pleiotropic nature of, um, of peptides, which is that they have effects all over the body. Mm. And for everyone that we know, there's possibly another effect somewhere else that we're not yet aware of. It's a little bit of what you talked about earlier. Like, it's, like we know it's doing this, this, and this, but meantime, in the background, it's also doing mm. five other things that we're not yet aware of. So... I just want to be really clear here that we're not, you know, we're not being prescriptive. We're not telling people to run out and get their hands on this stuff. This is really just about education. It's for those of us who just love learning about the new things that are out on the edge. So that brings me to our final one that we, I think we're going to touch on tonight. And that's FGL. Are you familiar with that one? All right. Well, yeah, we're just finishing synthesizing a batch of it. There you go. So then you are. So this is one, another one that increases neurogenesis. So the, the new cell formation in, in the brain, um, it's neuroprotective. It's got that whole neuroprotective thing, gives your brain a big fat hug. Um, it enhances cognition. Um, it supports remyelination. It seems to help people who suffer from certain types of depression. Is there anything else that people should know about this? Like, and, and, and actually, what's the method of administration for this one? The C link was intranasal. Well, it can be taken orally, but then that would be very expensive. Uh, to give you an idea, let's say you would inject somebody who would inject it, it would be like five milligrams, maybe those. Wow. Yeah. Let's say one to five milligrams. As for oral, you would need to take like 200 milligrams. Same story like any peptides. When they are somehow available orally, it's a small percentage. Right, right. So uh, obviously now you have like a uh, hundredfold difference. That means you're going to have price-wise, you're going to have that hundredfold too. So For it's, sure. So what are your thoughts on FGL and how does it compare to the... No, it's a great, it's a great peptide. Again, that, the thing is they all work through, most of them through different pathways. Yeah. So again, if you have something wrong in your brain, it's not, it wouldn't be preventive if yeah. you were to use them on yourself, but more uh, therapeutic, I would use more than one, you know, to be sure that I attend all pathways possible to rebuild and repair. Mm -hmm. 
as if it's preventive, you use them in sequence. So your work on one aspect, then the other one, and at the end of the year, you'll have that cumulative effect where you have looked at all aspects, so to say, of the brain repair. But yeah, it's a very potent peptide actually in brain. Uh, so you could actually, in, yeah. So at some point, when this comes out into the mainstream and and people are actually being prescribed these peptides, mm. it's almost like literally going at a problem from all different sides so that you cover the bases and have a problem. well that's the thing the body is made like that it's that yeah. complex that there is not only one thing that will fix the brain like not only one thing will fix uh the heart or the liver you know it's uh even you know that um Anything you look at, it's multi-level, multi-pathway, multi-function. So you have to attend everything. Uh, and and people, yeah, they have to see that too, you know. Mm -hmm. Like senescence, you know, you have that FOXO4, DRI. It yeah. does kill senescent cells, but not all kinds and all senescent cells. So, so eventually, they will develop a therapy of killing senescent cells. Probably it's going to be four or five compounds, hopefully all peptides, so we'll be able to make them all. That will take care overall. It's not going to be only one. So it's a bit the same thing with the brain or anything. You know, it's not one thing. When you look at a complex uh, organ like the brain, there is not so much we don't know. One thing. You know, like it's there's just so much we don't know about the brain. So uh, uh, yeah, if you think that the, the, the body is complex, well, <laughs> brace yourself if you're looking into the brain. Because you see that a lot too often, you know, what should be, do some, in the brain you have so much of that, uh, what they call uh, that paradoxical effect of drugs. And that's because yeah. of, you know, people, uh, it's a small percentage, but some people they take a Valium and that wakes them up. Yeah. Uh, you know they have the that's why they call it the paradoxical effect. You know you can look it up. That's known. It has the inverse effect. Yeah. yeah. Of what is expected. Why? Who knows? You know it's that complex that in 2019 we don't know what why why it's happening. Well, I think probably some of it may even have to do with genetic. Uh, variation most probably most probably some of it who knows but you know and which brings us to the next big mystery of the universe which is the placebo effect right so from hey, the there, 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 there are there are studies and that's the most amazing part where the placebo had a better effect than than the actual medication they were looking at absolutely i love those studies so Again, as you said, that brings you in a totally different realms of things, but it's there too, you know? Uh, Absolutely. Okay, so I think we're going to leave it at that for tonight. I yeah, I, I'm just going to name probably some people they were wondering what's that protein that increased uh, IQ. Just so uh, you look it up, it's cloto, the cloto protein. Oh, yeah, no, I read about that. Wait, yeah. did that come from a frog? No, no wait. Not no. That, no, it's not that one. Uh, I mean, I don't know where it comes from. I know we have it already in the brain, but the uh, clotoprotein, yeah. uh, there are studies done right now on it. Uh, I'm, I'm in touch with a researcher in California who does research on, on it, and I'm trying to be included in one of his groups <laughs> of studies. Yeah. Well, you know what? I just but read about it recently. That, that's the only compound known officially there might be others that they know in labs that increases iq uh, not two to six points which wow. is <laughs> that's a lot actually so that's the only known protein that does that nothing else with no side effects or they they don't know yet i think it's too early to say yeah okay well, that'll be interesting. Let us well, I, again, no side effects noticeable on mice. You know, <laughs> I, I, I put that thing there in the group at one point, you know. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm interesting that you're signing up for that. <laughs> Good for you. 
Well, you know, try, try it out. Well, the name is science. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, Jean-Francois, so I think there's one other one that I was going to bring up, but I think I'm going to save it for another day um, because we've gone long enough. I uh, think which one would that have been? The RG3. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks great. It's not a peptide, though. So I, I, I've read a bit about it. Oh, yeah, if you could introduce this one to your protocols. Uh, so, I mean, it's an protocols, yeah. of red Panax ginseng. Oh, yeah. So probably the FDA will ban it soon. Yeah, well, so it's, it's <laughs> because it's very similar in structure to steroids. Yeah. Hormone, right? And it works more so, you know. Yeah, apparently major impact on neuroinflammation. They have a tendency to ban things that work. Uh, I know. It, it seems to reduce beta amyloid plaque in mm. Alzheimer's disease. Um, it even, and it's, and again, this is another one of these pleiotropic runs, right? It, it decreases keloid scars. Um, it helps with depression. It mm -hmm. helps in gut dysbiosis. It reverses fatty liver disease. It protects islet cells. Like it has effects on all mm -hmm. these different organs in all these different areas. Yeah, actually, I've learned about this one through your groups. I didn't know. And I think Jeff uh, yeah. wrote a few things about it. And I found it very interesting. Yeah, yeah so it's really interesting. It even, it's also, it's an exercise mimetic. So, sitting well, again, yeah, we're going <laughs> don't say that. People, they're going to postpone their gym membership and they're just going to get that. <laughs> uh, but, it, but in that sense, it even seems to help brown fat, like fat to mm. convert white fat into brown fat, no. which of course is that holy grail of the thermogenic fat. Um, it increases the performance of muscle by improving, increasing the number of mitochondria in muscle. Like it's, it's pretty impressive, you know, like looking at it from a research perspective, like in terms of how is it actually going to perform in the individual? I think that still remains to be seen, but this is another one that I think there's a ton of clinical studies. Uh, obviously, even just for the reason of, because of the number of different effects it seems to have, but all these people pounding uh, that red Panax ginseng or seem to be onto something. <laughs> Oh, there is so many things like, like that new thing, that new little protein, the GDF11. Yeah. I, I don't know why I never heard of it before, you know, and I've read about it a bit before uh, in another group uh, on, pep on peptides too. They talked about it and it seems that actually, and I'm surprised the guy has been on, uh, on that for like 10 years or so. Yeah. And I said, well, I never heard of it, but it, it looks amazingly promising, <laughs> I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have to dig into the research because when you look, I, I kind of fast look at research yeah. and it, it's, but the guy says it, it's all dose related. You have not take too much, otherwise you start to have bad effects <laughs> and right? yeah, yeah. It's but uh, from what I've read so far, it's very promising. And well, I'm going to try it myself at the beginning of next year and see what that one. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm actually thinking of reaching out to him and seeing if he'll do, if he'll come on and do a chat. Oh, that'd be nice, actually. Yeah, to have him really the podcast. Your first man. Because mm. um, I believe that what he's done is he's, he's got, what is it now? 30, can you say like he has 100 people? That he's mon like yeah yeah and I, I I like him for that he's very systematic monitoring things and uh, too bad he's not a PhD or a doctor he could publish that you know but he should have yeah. come with some doctor and uh, just publish and well he, you never know so he's now getting out on the circuit right so yeah no but he has been uh, investigating and trying out and doing things for many years now and you know. Uh, and, uh, results out there, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, so Jean-Francois, we're gonna, we're, I'm cutting us off. I think it's time for us to rest. Up. And uh, thank you so much for tonight, as always. Okay. You're so generous with your time, so I really appreciate it. And um, if anybody, you know, you're you're Mr. Ken Lab, so it's. Um, it's uh, not that hard to find you. You're out in oh, very easy. Can lab, but no S at the end. Can lab. C A N L A B. Dot net. Not with S, yeah. Right. Uh, there so, is. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and also 
Um, we were going to talk very quickly about the situation with China. With oh, but yeah, a lot of people are worried. Mostly, uh, well, it's a double situation because at the same time that it, they were forced by the U.S., you know, in that new treaty that kind of Trump pushed on the China. Yeah where they will have to stop. And that's the first time because people, they say, yeah, but you know, they did it with steroids. Yeah, but because in China it was, they said, yeah, make steroids if you want. Well, China said, yeah, make them because they decide at the end, it's still government control. Yeah. But now it's the government who's telling those company, now you stop making that and yeah. we'll find something else for you. You know, government is saying that. but it's government controlled, although what's happening, you know, that's why it's by area, you know, you have a zone where it's chemical, a zone right. uh, where it's textile, so you cannot open a chemical, you know, you decide to open a chemical company in the textile zones. No, it's not possible. You know, it's all government controlled. They have their ministries and they, they control that. So now it's the Chinese government officially that's saying, now we stop producing those things, steroids, uh, pro-hormone, SARMs, and peptides. On the list, they are not all there, but I see it hard that they stop to produce some and not other ones. So the thing is at this point, nobody knows in, in the reality of things, how it's gonna turn. But it's the first time that the prohibition comes from the Chinese government. Officially, they say, no, we stop making this mm -hmm. for export for whatever reason. So, of course, a lot of people are freaking out uh, because if it's uh, applied to a full extent, then, yeah, that's going to cut off the market. Uh, of many things, not only peptides, uh, a lot of uh, supplements, uh, uh, because there are many things on that list. You know, it's not limited Quite to those compounds. Right, as well? Eh? Quite a lot of nootropic supplements as well. Right? Exactly, uh, a lot of things. So, and stuff that were legal in the US and all that, and suddenly people were sourcing from China, you know, doing tests and all that. and. So most of the time, I guess it was good if you trusted the, the, the company to put the right dosage and everything and all that. No, I think the Chinese, Chinese products like many other things. And, and, and again, you know, I've seen talks and, uh, but I did because, you know, before I, I started my company, I was sourcing from China and actually it's due to variable qualities that I started to my company and I'm still in touch with those companies so I wrote to them and I say hey, uh, and I send them in Chinese you know that thing and they didn't know about it you know they, they, they don't have the news like we do and they would say oh uh, I don't know about that and they would come back to they came back to me the next day and they say yeah you're right we're starting of January we cannot uh, we won't be able to ship anymore so uh, that's it so will they be able to make it for domestic use China? Yeah. Is it just that they can't export? No, well, they don't. In China, listen, I have a friend of mine. Uh, he is a Mr. Olympia, uh, senior, you know, over 40. He won in 2005, I think. Claude Gru is from Montreal. And he goes to China every year to give conference on, on training, on stuff. And he goes to big gyms in China. But he told me the first time he went, and there, like first, everybody knew about him, and he was surprised. So, oh yeah, Claude Gru, blah blah blah, big notoriety, Mr. Olympia, and all that. But then, you know, talking with the athletes and everything, they had no clue about steroids, about peptides, about SARMs. They're the it's the country that produce for the planet, but within China. Because they don't have that internet access like we do. You know, it's all government control. So they, they have no clue. And actually, <laughs> for a while, I wish <laughs> you will believe that. I had this guy, owner of Three Gym in China, who was buying SARMs from me. He would come to Montreal. He has a house here. And now he, he brings his athletes that are 
going to compete. It brings them a few months in Montreal to train. Then they go back to train and he would buy like a bunch of uh, SARMs from me and uh, peptides to bring back to China. And me in my head, that's like, well, you know, why don't you buy there? You know, you're on site, you know, you go to the company, you make sure it's well done. You, you know, get some Chinese biochemists to double check things and, you know, it would be a lot cheaper. And no, they, they have no clue because of that. So there, there is no local production. It was really wow. for the export. Okay. But now it's the first time. It's not it's the US it's not the US saying you cannot ship it to the US or well yeah because it's a US thing. No, it's China they they they're forcing China to stop producing them. And now the next thing is that okay some other country will pick up probably India but it's going to take a year or two because it's not that easy, you know, to mass produce like that. It's very expensive. It takes time to set it up, to find out the, the people who have the know-how. Yeah. It's not like you read a couple of books and you're good to go. You, you need expertise in that, uh, for like anything. Well, so it's going to take a while. <laughs> yeah, but I do, I do think that somebody will, as you've said in another forum, you said it, I think, in the group, like there are smart chemists in many, many countries. So yeah. somebody's going to step up. Like, you know, nature abhors a void. So somebody- Of course, you know, it's not like the end of the world. It's like- It's just going to be, it's going to be bumpy for a while. It's, uh, you know, bumpy doesn't mean the end of things. You know, me, I was in, in Europe, I was in Spain when the big uh, crash happened in 2008. Yeah. And, you know, and people always say, well, in Spain, Pain was it at one point unemployment was over 50% and all that and that. And you know, you read it here, it's like big disaster, but the, the, at the end of the day, we're in 2019, Spain is still there. They still have the same problem as before. You know, it's like life goes on and you know, yeah. uh, it, it works. So uh, I wouldn't dramatize it so much as some people do. Some people now they're stuck in like for 20 years ahead while well, they still can and they say, no, that's it. No, I, I, th 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 there will be always other ways. But me, what I think what it's gonna do, that, that's good for my company because it will expose <laughs> all those companies because at one point there will be a shortage, uh, at least for a few months. Probably a lot of companies they're stocking up. So it's not like the first of January, they don't have nothing else. But when they run out of stocks and before some other country emerge to supply, they will be there a few months. They want with nothing out of stock. So you're out of stock for two weeks, three weeks, a month. Okay, it figures. But you're out of stock for three months, six months. And what, you're supposed, you, you tell us you make it locally in the US, but you, you know what's wrong. You know, it's kind of going to expose those, those companies. Right. Uh, claiming it's made in the U.S. when they were sourcing from China. Right. All right. Well, you know, so be it. So, so goes. So goes. But uh, yeah. But you know, I, I uh, uh, as you said, you know, the something else will come up somewhere, somehow. Somebody will do it. Uh, okay. I know we're six point something billion people. I'm sure. Uh, Somebody will find a way. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure of it. Okay, Jean-Francois, so for real now, I'm going to bid you good night. Thank you again so much for your, your time tonight. This was great, as always. And um, I'm sure we'll dream up another topic for another day. We will. Oh, and you know what? Have a very great holiday season. Hey, you too. And to everybody. <laughs> Take care. Okay, bye. bye.